thank you very much, Mr. Wilmoth, for joining us here today and for speaking with DESA News. Can you tell us uh, about the work of the upcoming Commission on Population and Development? Well, as you know, the, the, the Commission on Population and Development will take place uh, the week of the 22nd to the 26th of April. And uh, it will address the topic of new trends in migration, demographic aspects. So this is um, yet another discussion of migration that we've had uh, here at the United Nations. We had a similar topic on international migration during the Commission of 2006. And so we're taking up that topic again here in 2013. But it's a very important year at the United Nations for the discussion of international migration in particular, because we're planning also for the high-level dialogue on international migration and development, which will take place as part of the 68th session of the General Assembly uh, in October of this year. It's also very important, I would say, as part of the ongoing discussions about uh, the post-2015 development agenda, and uh, migratory movements both within countries and across international borders are a very important example of population dynamics and illustrate the, the role of population dynamics in development processes more generally. Which issues do you believe are the most important to be addressed by the Commission this year? Well, since the title, of, since the topic is New Trends in Migration, Demographic Aspects, we have tried to focus first on a general discussion of the trends that are happening and trying to get some of the facts on the ground to help member states understand some of the just facts of the situation. For example, we work on documenting the size of migratory flows around the world and the shape uh, and direction of the trends. Uh, and what we observe is that there's been a, an increase in, in, in the complexity and the size and changes in the direction of these flows over time. We, we estimate the number of international migrant, migrants in the world to have been around two, 155 million in 1990 and growing to around 214 million in 2010. Now that represents individuals who are currently living in a country other than their country of birth. Now, if we ha currently have over 200 million international migrants, we surely have an even greater number of internal migrants, people who have moved within their own countries. So uh, even though this only represents, uh, the international migrants represent about 3% of the world's population, if we count internal migrants by any definition, by any reasonable definition, we would be at over 10% of the world's population who are currently migrants living in a place or a country different from their area of birth. What are the results you hope will stem from the Commission's work, both looking short term but also in the long term? Well, uh, we hope that the Commission uh, will encourage countries to think about practical measures that can be implemented uh, to help them to harness the benefits, the various benefits of migration, uh, but also to address the challenges. So for example, I think it's uh, possible that countries could institute measures that would lower some of the costs of migration. For example, uh, by making it possible to have multiple entry visas, which al allow people to uh, migrate in a circular pattern uh, or to return to their countries of origin without fear of being able to come back to the host country. And that this kind of exchange, uh, we think, helps to encourage development. And there are other sorts of practical measures that countries can implement to try and help them uh, make the best use of migration in their process of development. It may also be useful, and I hope that countries will find an opportunity to focus on the importance of protecting the human rights of migrants as part of the upcoming commission. Uh, we've observed that for migrants whose rights are well respected, uh, they are best able to participate in the broader process of social and economic development in their host and origin societies. And on the other hand, uh, migrants who have an irregular legal status, they are vulnerable to abuse and exploitation. And I hope that the Commission will address this issue as well. From a population aspect, which issues do you see as most important to secure in the development agenda beyond 2015? Well, so here I think you're broadening the discussion beyond just migration, which is migration is the topic for the Commission on Population and Development this year. 
but here in the population division and in DESA we're thinking more broadly about population dynamics and also about population health. So I think from our standpoint, um, the, the issues that really matter, first there are the issues related to population health, which have partly been reflected, well reflected in fact, in the MDG framework that exists. The focus, for example, on maternal and child health and mortality. These are well reflected. I think perhaps we could have a broader uh, focus on health across the entire life course as represented, for example, by something like life expectancy at birth. And we would like to focus on that in the post-2015 development agenda on the side of population health. But we've also been talking a lot about population dynamics, which includes migration and population growth and population aging, what we often call the population megatrends. These are the big mass movements of population that have very important implications for social and economic development and for human well-being across the board. So in these areas, well, we talk about the four megatrends. We talk about population growth, population aging, uh, international migration, and urbanization. And all of these uh, present important uh, opportunities uh, for development, but also challenges to countries as they try to find ways to manage their flows, these flows of people. And in all cases, we need to be thinking about policies that focus on managing those trends and possibly affecting them in a desirable way, but also on policies that allow us to adapt to those changes, many of which are inevitable. Thank you very much, Mr. Wilmoth, for joining us here today and for sharing uh, your views on the important work of the upcoming Commission on Population and Development. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure.